Welcome to another episode of Wheels of Fury. Me and Matt kill a Kyle. And I figured since it's time for Halloween, well, in a few weeks, we talk of Halloween Havoc 1993. Yes, sir. And oh shit, man, that was some kind of matches. Yeah! <laughs> It was quite the show, and I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I think WCW was going into what WWF was trying to do, was get more violent. I mean, we've seen blood be like before that. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think anything to this effect. No. I think you would see that more in Japan. Yeah. Maybe, but this was definitely a good show. Yeah, there's a match uh, near the main event, or near the main event, whatever, that, oh, it's going to be interesting to talk about. It's uh, going to be a doozy. Yeah, uh, sir. So, now, to yep, go ahead. Dirt Thunder. Oh. To get into this, you know, we hey. just did Beach Blast 93. And we sampled some Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire, which is actually no pun intended fire. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. So I think for this one we ought to continue the theme, continue the trend. Yes, sir. With Oh Yeah Bailey's Jeremy Sue. Mmm. Yeah, we've had this before. It's so good. Yes. Matt earlier said that the uh, Jack Daniels is sweet, but it's not like, you know, a dessert sweet, as he put it. Yeah. This is more like we tried Forty Creek, Barter Tart, yeah. and the Nanaimo one. Those are, you know, yeah. what do you call it? Dessert in a glass. So is this. Oh, yeah. It's not just sweet. Too sweet. And I mean, it's like, exactly, it's dessert in a glass. It's something to have with your coffee in the morning when you have guests and you want to get nice and saucy fucked up at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. So, man, one of those things where I don't put anything in my coffee, but this is pretty damn good. And I gotta get my own, you know, just for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Matt prefers drinking his coffee black, but I mean, like, go out and, you know, buy a bottle of this or, you know. It's a treat. Even, you know, the uh, Nanaimo 40 Creek or the... Butter tart one. You put that in your coffee. It's like, now there is something that'll make a coffee just a little bit better. And since Christmas is coming up, it'll make your Christmas a lot more fucking merrier. Yeah, you could say that. But here's to another 
WCW review. Yes, sir. Who knows, maybe down the line, we'll do two ECW reviews. Yeah, maybe. In one night, but for now, this is me and Matt, Killer Kyle, and we love you guys. Yes. Thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> Subscribe to us. Yes. And, yeah. That's the of you. That's true of you. Get it on. Yeah. So we kick things off with a six man match. Six man tag, you've got Ice Train, Charlie Norris, and the Shockmaster versus Harlem Heat and the Equalizer. Now, this was Harlem Heat's. Introduction into WCW. The thing is, when they were first brought in, they were known as Cole and Kane. Oh. And then a little bit later, they started going by what everybody knows them as now Booker T and Stevie Ray. Oh, that's right, yes. I'm not exactly sure. The reasoning behind why they were called Cole and Kane, but yeah, yeah. Honestly, it, and I saw that a while ago, and it was like it does not fit those people. Like yeah. when you look at somebody, you don't, and they're a name you just don't think that person would fit. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, why not just go with Stevie Ray and Booker T? Yeah, I know. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this was a good match. The Shockmaster. <sighs> poor Fred. Yeah, yeah, poor Fred. Poor, poor Fred. And now we have, oh, Joe Train, Charlie Norris, and Shockmaster did win this match. Yes, Ice Train, Charlie Norris, and Shockmaster won this match. Yes. But now we have, we talked about him in the last review, mm -hmm. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff with The Assassin. Yes. Who took on Ricky, the Dragon Steamboat. Yes, sir. I don't know if he was a dragon at that time. Well, when he was in WCW at this point, he had the headgear, the head dress, and like the wings, and he'd do the whole like. Breathing fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this was a good match. Both very talented wrestlers. Unfortunately, this ended in a count out. Yeah. It's a waste, but what can I say? Like, it's. That's one thing about the pay per views that turn out to be such good pay-per-views there's always gonna be a count out or disqualification at some point yeah sometimes that's the way it goes though yeah so we're going to this match for the WCW World Television Championship Lord Steven Regal with Sir William versus <laughs> the British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith Oh, buddy. I mean, whoever thought you would see Stephen Regal, William Regal, whatever, taking on the British Bulldog, and once again, not yeah. watching a lot of WCW or knowing anything about the pay-per-views except for what we've done. Mm -hmm. You know, to see these two guys in a match facing each other. It's like, fuck, that would have been brutal. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, British strong style, for sure. Oh, yeah. And once again, I mean, Darren wasn't in the right frame of mind in WCW. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think Davey was either. Man. But, yeah. again, like, a very interesting match. Yes. 
Lord Stephen Regal picked up the win. No, it went to a time limit draw. Oh shit. Yeah. Eh, that's two now. Yeah. A count out factory, or a count out, and then a, you say a double count out, and then a time limit draw. Yeah. So there we go on to this match for the WCW United States Heavyweight title. Mm -hmm. The natural Dustin Rhodes versus Steve Austin. Uh, two Texas boys. And you know, it's kind of apropos in a way because shortly after mm -hmm. this, at least four years after this, I guess you would see both Dustin and shortly after that, Steve Austin in WWF. Yes. And then, of course, you go on to Stone Cold Steve Austin mm -hmm. before that thing mastered. But when you look at Steve in the late 80s, early 90s, and you look at the physique, and, you know, when he started, he had the long blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. So different from what he is now here, even. Yeah. But this match was pretty cool. And, yeah, for the United States mm -hmm. Championship. Mm -hmm. And, I mean... Yeah, it was cool to see. I'm not sure if I ever saw this match, but yeah, Dustin had retained the title. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's cool that Dustin had redeemed himself, obviously having mm -hmm. a lot of problems in his life yeah. regarding WWF, Gold Dust, and yeah. Impact, which... He chooses to forget, and that's understandable. Yeah. And then rebuilding his life as, you know, the return of gold dust, if you will. Right. And now he's in AEW, and he's fucking better than ever. And oh, he's yeah. 52 or whatever he is. Now. Something like that, yeah. But, and then you have Steve Austin. We talked about him in the last pay per view as well. Yep. Just fucking amazing. Now, a guy that was told not to go back into the ring, 19 years later, had a match at WrestleMania and was better than ever. Yeah. But yeah, these two guys definitely, two of the best wrestlers of all time. And, you know, if you want, you could put them on Mount Rushmore. I don't know. At least Steve. You could, yeah. yeah. Steve, for sure, yeah. Dustin, maybe. Yeah. So now we go on to a tag team match for the WCW World Tag Team titles. The championship match keep, just keep on rolling here. <laughs> TV title, US title, the tag titles. You got the Nasty Boys, Dobbs and Sags, with Missy Hyatt. I guess the tag team we just mentioned in the previous video. Go check it out when that becomes available. Marcus Alexander Bagwell and Two Cold Scorpio. Yeah, I guess this was a pretty popular tag team at the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the odd couple? No kidding. Uh, yeah. And I mean, you look at the Nasty Boys and you look at their career. You could span all the way to EWA. Yep. Go to WWF. Multiple time tag team champions. Mm -hmm. Go to WCW again. Multiple tag team champions. They even had the WCW Hardcore Tag Team titles. Right. What else? I don't know. I don't know what they did after that. Yeah, I'm not sure after that. I mean, it would have been interesting to see them with a singles title. Yeah. I think Brian Knobs is a lot more popular. Rather than Jerry Sakes, I think Jerry was still a hell of a wrestler. Oh, we, yeah. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, one of the top take teams of all time. And they won the match, retaining the titles. No, Marcus and Scorpio were the champions. Okay. Foul! Nasty Boys defeated them to become the tag champions. Oh, okay. Yeah. We go on to the singles match. 
the stinger versus Sid Vicious. Yeah, I didn't call him a Sid Vicious, I always called him Sid Justice or Psycho, Psycho Sid. Psycho Sid. But Psycho Sid Vicious Justice. Yeah, but you look at Sid Vicious, the bass player <laughs> for the Sex Pistols. But rather, this was a good match. I mean, both very talented, and I know that Sid won good on the mic, unfortunately. Yeah. Sting, once again, here's a guy that career spans all the way to the late 80s. Talk about his one with Jim Helmick. Yep. The Blade Runners. Blade Runners, yep. Fucking go all the way to WCW, his career in WWE. And, oh, still wrestling at 62 and 63 in AEW. 63, I believe. Well, just yeah, pretty the sure shit this guy. Yep, yeah, and just the shit that this guy can still do. <laughs> like, Sting has done stuff in AEW that... Some things you wouldn't necessarily see him do in, like, WCW, let's say, but more or less, he still got it. wonder if he's a grandfather. <laughs> Probably. My grandfather took me fishing. What does his grandson do? Watch him fly off the house. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, Sting won. Yes. Which, I say that because, I mean... You look how big Sid was. Mm -hmm. And Six, you know, nine, three, thirteen. Well, three, thirteen, a couple of. Yeah, talk about Big Van Vader coming back to have that one match with Heath Slater. Having Psycho Sid Justice coming back yeah. for one match. And it's like, you know, he still could have wrestled. I just don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know either. And we go on to this match for the WCW International World Heavyweight Championship. So at this point, there was two titles. There was this one, which is the international title. Then there was the WCW Heavyweight Championship. But later on, and well, you can eat, well, okay. The international title, as it was known back then was the big gold belt yeah we all know and recognize from later on in wcw when it was in wwe for a little while and yeah the, we had terry taylor as the guest referee for this match which is a little unusual yeah yeah you know i gotta say like terry was one of those guys that he wasn't exactly the greatest in the ring. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a jobber no. by any means, but look at his WWE career as well. I mean, starting off the Red Rooster. Yeah. I definitely remember Terry in 90, I want to say late 92, early 93, obviously he was here in WCW, so that could have yeah. been a lot later. Right. But I do remember him. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that was kind of an odd match. I think it was either before this or after this, Terry Taylor was a member of the York Exchange, who was led, which was led by Alexander York, who was Terry Ronalds. <gasps> Oh, yes. But, yep. Disqualification. Yeah. And then we go on to the main event. This is the one that I say to be real interesting that I wouldn't find a time to be. Makes this worth it. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Big Van Vader versus Cactus Jack in a Texas Deathmatch. Now, 
Vader was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion at the time, but the title wasn't on the line. And these two, <laughs> who did they beat the tar out of each other? Now the story goes, is that... <laughs> Nick told Leon, I want you to hit me as hard as you can, and when they're in the corner, you know, Leon, the Vader, rather, <laughs> is throwing the punches and actually breaking Mick's nose. Right. You know, he had a point where they were near the guardrail and Mick took a camera, a fucking camera, and those were huge back then. So it was like he took it and he hit Leon with it. It was bloody, it was brutal. You know, back then Cactus Jack, just one of the most dangerous motherfuckers in this business. And I mean, when you look at Big Van Vader's career in Japan, yes. and you go, he can definitely apply this here, mm -hmm. and he fucking well did. Oh yeah, like, Vader spent the majority of his career in Japan, and so his style fit in Japan very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Leon being able to dish out a ton of punishment, and Foley being able mm -hmm. to take a ton of punishment, is what made this match so just outrageously over the top, and there was a, well... Yeah, there's one point where they both ended up rolling into a grave and there was a headstone that read, R.I.P. Vader. Yeah, I mean, he comes in to the grave now, apparently he must have played it or something. Right. He came out all bloody. Yeah. And yeah, they continued the match. And basically, yeah, Vader won. Yep. You know, and it wasn't a false finish. No. Luckily. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, and that's what I mean. You have guys like Cactus Jack, <laughs> who, one of the most dangerous wrestlers. Here's a guy that did a lot of moves, not only to hurt his opponents, but, but he would hurt himself. Yeah. And Vader had one of these awesome careers. And I mean, he wore a mask, but not very long, because he would always take it off, because he said they were heavy on his face. Yeah, it was heavy on his face, and I think, too, a lot of times he would get hit, and he would shift, and, you know, like, he would adjust as we could see or whatever, and then he would get, eventually get tired of adjusting as we just take the fucking thing off. Yeah. And I mean, you look at Mick's career, I mean, both guys, I mean, had a stellar career in WWE. Yes. I mean, Vader, not so much, unfortunately. No. Yeah. Which is a shame, because he was a big man, and yeah, he was a WCW guy, but it wouldn't have hurt to give him the WWF title. Yeah. And Mick Foley, although we all know his story, Mankind, Dude Love. Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. A guy that had doubts. Or, well, Vince had doubts. Yes. Him coming to WWF. And I was like, <laughs> I'll show him. And did he ever? We fucking talk about him to this day. Yep. A lot of history between the, the well, yeah, yeah, these two individuals, especially McFoley. And I mean, they're both in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yes. And honestly, they will never be forgotten. I know well, Rick is still alive, but yeah, you know. Unfortunately, in 2016, I think it was, we lost Vader. And you know, it was predicted that it was going to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately. So. This was a very good show, and once again, I think 93 in general, and that's why it's one of my favorite years, mm -hmm. not just for myself, but for the fact that, yeah, I was never a fan of WCW. Right. But this feud that those two had especially, mm. 
They had a match on my birthday. Right. How fucking cool is that? Yes. Now, unfortunately, I was more of a WWF kid, but yeah. it is what it is. But right. it's show in general. The fun, the cartoonish. Like, people talk about how cartoony WWF was, but WCW was just as much that. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. But, yeah, this was a lot of fun. I wish I could find more footage. There wasn't really a lot, but from yeah. what we did find, it was actually a very good show. And then, that's why it's fun to do these. It takes you back. Yes. You know, you kind of look back for a reason. It takes me back to that little boy. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you. Like, you know, you're a lot younger than I am, so you... Yeah. In 93, you were... I was eight. You were eight. I was like five? Yeah. Four? Five? Yeah, five. Yes. Yeah. Actually, no, I would have been nine because this was in October. So. Yeah. So, this has been another episode of Wheels of Fury. A double dose. Yes, sir. We talked of. Well, last time we. Well, last couple times, I think. We've done the look back at you series. We talked about. To WWF pay per views. I believe so, so, yeah. I thought, why not WCW? And. Yeah. But next week, I believe, is Battle for Glory. 21st, yes. Sunday. Yeah, so. Next week is Battle for Glory. Yeah. And then. Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc will be somewhere in there. Yeah. And then Full Gear. Yes. And then I guess we'll go from there. But yeah. In the meantime and in between time. Jesus Chris, you kept me fucking drunk already. Well no, you're like yeah, anyways. We will talk to you next week. Deuces. Peace. <laughs>